Next speaker is Tim Edwards from eFabulous. So thank you. No? Good. Yeah, you're all set? So actually, my name is Mohammed Qasim. Um, I'm actually my, uh, my colleague of Tim's um, from a company called eFabulous. And our, uh, our presentation today is talking about, just briefly, about a, a chip that we uh, built based on a, one of the RISC-V cores that are available in the, uh, in the open source domain. But we completed uh, uh, everything on it with an open source design flow. Um, So there are questions that we we wanted to uh, address in the first in the first place. Uh, can we actually design a market relevant um, uh, uh, SOC using an open source uh, uh, cores or an open source design flows? And and most of the open cores uh, or open source hardware that's available in the, around the world doesn't include the peripherals and analog and usually these are type of our uh, functions are, uh, are are protected and proprietary for uh, whoever developed it. Um, is there a complete design flow? So there are so many tools that exist, uh, point tools, different uh, uh, pieces of the of the flow of segments, and they work uh, with with different uh, with specific focus on some performance levels or uh, input formats, upper formats. They're not necessarily uh, uh, con uh, connected together in a st seamless way. So um, the, one of the thoughts we thought is that if we actually focus, instead of saying we have an open source design flow, can we uh, focus on a specific vertical application, specific performance range process technology, and actually create uh, uh, a, a design flow that works uh, in a robust way? Um, can we actually design um, um, uh, a war, you know a, 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 a microprocessor within a very short period of time to verify it and actually get it to tape out and be able to uh, uh, use it in a in a, in a real application? Um, the it is possible, of course, with one you know big disclaimer is that if you use it from a pre-engineered type of templates that are open that can be customized very quickly, uh, benefiting from the existing effort on the open source community on the verification that's been done before. And as, as I said here, you don't boil the ocean. And then uh, one last thing in the open source that I, uh, hardware or SOCs that I personally found that it's incredibly important is that the multi-domain nature of the, of the color uh, that are needed not to, del to deliver one chip You'd have, um, you'd have to have the right collaboration dynamics, right people, or a medium that allows this to happen in a seamless way. So Raven. Uh, Raven is a 32-bit microcontroller based on a Pico RV32. That's a very popular core by a friend, Clifford Wolf. Um, and what we, uh, what we did here is that we wanted to build this chip in a, with an open source design flow to demonstrate it is possible, it is predictable. And one important thing is here we're using the analog, uh, uh, we're using the analog uh, uh, peripherals from the foundry. And I will get back to the, the, the value of that or the, uh, whether uh, it's open or not, the question whether, because, because it's not open, there is an argument to be made about this is not an open source design, but so we, we put, uh, structured it in a way, in a, in a template. We wanted to develop it all the way to have a development board, silicon, everything, and publish all that on GitHub. And indeed, we have that now. Um, and it, you can you have the RTL of the top level with analog behavioral models and functional models that are mapped one to one to the foundry technology. So the key requirements in, as we develop the chip, um, we need everything that we've used to be uh, open source until you get to manufacturing. Um, 
it needs to be complete, both analog and digital functions, not, not just focus on a specific application uh, that doesn't use uh, the generic analog functions that we are used to. Uh, the test board, the development board, all the software that is needed to make it work, to be open source. And the very important part of it is that to be uh, verified enough, to be a, ready as a template that can be cloned and modified. And using the bus architectures, you basically can add more peripherals, you can limit uh, the changes in the chip in a, in a way that is uh, uh, restricted or to allow you to reduce the level of verification that you have to do every time you make a change to it. And uh, the finished design we wanted to be, can be commercialized. This is coming from the soft, if, you, if we use the software world example, there is the open source uh, software and there are companies that are using it to build commercial products all over the place. So our, our, our uh, vision basically for eFabulous is to be able to have, we have a platform that allows community members to design based on uh, open source uh, collateral and uh, put it in the marketplace. So as I mentioned here, the, it's, it started with the Pico RV 32 core and it was uh, very well uh, packaged uh, by itself with uh, test benches and code, and, but we, we took that and extended it to, to, to be compatible with what we wanted to do in the top level chip. We, we used the uh, XFAB as a foundry, it's one of our partners, and uh, 180 nanometer technology. And of course, the, the 180 nanometer is actually is a choice, it was made based on a business demand. It's not um, it, it's not it's not because of the lack of desire to do something else, because there is, it, it needs the post performance and uh, from analog perspective, and as well as the cost constraints for some of certain applications. Um, now, when it comes to the foundry data, so our view of this is that if you can have an, a, a top level or a design that has uh, uh, with an uh, architected in a way that once you go to the foundry, everything that you you had in open source gets replaced with an equivalent map on the manufacturing side, similar to 3D printing, similar. So I, if you think about the standard cell libraries, and, and there's an argument that people say, I want to see the GDS, I want to see the, what's inside there. Uh, and we don't agree with that necessarily because it doesn't, unless you're actually trying to optimize these cells into squeeze the performance in a high-end uh, high uh, technology node, it does not, it's actually impractical and it, it's only just pleasing to the eye, but it doesn't really give you any value from a design perspective. So we treated everything the same way these cell, cells are treated. One example, very common, is the, com the, the, the SRAM. Um, it's usually compiled and it's placed in a black box and the family would merge it during, uh, at, at the tip out pro uh, stage. So what we did uh, for the analog, we, we, we did a similar thing on our platform in a way that we, you can simulate using Verilog uh, uh, and Verilog real, using the real number modeling for analog, you can map that into uh, existing uh, functions on the platform. So um, an, an example here, just um, the typical layout, it just, we would convert it into uh, equivalent left view black box, and you know, everybody's aware of this in, the, in a form of a hierarchical design or, um, uh, or uh, 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 just black box design. So um, the, the, the key part here is that when we assemble these types of uh, components, we, we have a little bit of margin. We use best practices around it in a way that um, it comes clean right away. There's no uh, uh, action. So this is just a top level view of the, of the uh, uh, assembled chip. And that's the GGS view of it, except for the SRAM. So during when we used with the tools, uh, put it together, we, it looks like this, and then you can 
um, uh, if you have um, very low behavioral models for everything you have mapped one-to-one -to, -one to these cells, you'll be able to assemble it and um, use it for design. So, so this is uh, Raven um, the, uh, alive, and just, this is just a wake-up function for it. And it's actually published uh, on all the, the design, the top-level design, the, uh, in, including the, uh, the, the RTL and rep analog representations for the, all the analog functions on GitHub, as well as it's listed here on the RISC-V Foundation as a part of the uh, 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 SOCs that are available. And again, I say here, um, we, this, uh, this repo is in, uh, in evolution, and as we go, we're adding everything that under the sun that you can replicate this. And then once you, uh, you arrive to, you can, you can change the digital core, you can change whatever, but as long as you keep the analog peripherals uh, uh, fixed, you'll be able to, to enumerate them and add them to the chip as much as you want and, and go to eFabless, and eFabless will take it to manufacture. Uh, we're, we're working on enriching this library of analog to be more and more relevant to the market. So what our platform that we put together, we call it the Triplicity platform, um, and it has, um, it's, it's all the tools in it, are, are engines assembled from uh, open source uh, domain software, and we have some gaps, and, but these gaps are, uh, if you go back to the 180 nanometer first time I designed with it, was in 2000, uh, year 2000. Uh, and back, back then, the, some of these tools that are required here that you have to use, um, um, we just manage them by design methodology and margins. So we've done a good job in assembling that in a, in a streamlined way and with a web integration completely available um, uh, without, no, without cost, without uh, an NDA to actually get in, uh, use it, and it has a real process, real process technology attached to it because everything is obfuscated or black boxed, as I said. Um, and uh, one of the objectives of, for us to, to, use, to, to build such device is to make it as a template, as I mentioned, and be able to, to add the peripherals and then be able to uh, customize it for different applications and reduce the verification effort that you apply for every chip you develop. So eFabless has put together that all of that is in one platform online, web-based. You register, you get in. You, there is no um, uh, hassle about you know what tools, what uh, PDKs. It's just we support certain. Uh, we support now uh, XFAB, and then we just announced uh, Global Foundry's 130 nanometer. So we're adding that, filling that arsenal of process technologies. Um, the, in two modes, works in two modes. A design community can actually log in and design, and we have a marketplace you can actually place the outcome of your uh, design it's, uh, in the marketplace for potential uh, customers to be able to look at it and give you feedback and actually be able to try the design on the platform live. On the other side, if a, if a customer is requiring certain customization or certain functions, and it's already happened when we published, uh, a week after we published Raven on uh, GitHub, we got a major request from a customer uh, saying, I want this, I want, but I want these three, three other peripherals on top of it. And within a month, we were starting the cycle again to add Raven plus plus or Raven with different customized for a given customer. Uh, so in summary, um, just the key message is it is possible to be able to get uh, 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 to uh, production worthy chips with uh, open source design flow as long as you carve it around specific um, uh, uh, performance range and technology range, and you, uh, you're aware of what, what the margins and what the specifications of our process limits, et cetera, uh, around. Um, there is no, uh, the, the, as you go down to the transistor level, this is where we talk about analog, which is not necessarily relevant in here. Uh, you start getting into the, the weeds about 
what to expose and what not to expose, and the foundries are generally protective of that. Although there is a foundry today that is, um, um, they actually asked me just to say that they are planning to release a PDK in, in, uh, in the open soon, but it's again, it's within the range of uh, 90 nanometer, 130 nanometer, and their purpose for that is to enable as many designs as possible to get through them. Uh, with the mature nodes in general, these practices can eliminate a lot of the needs for analysis tools, and it gives you a little bit more conservative design, but it, uh, you, you actually can get it done quickly and, uh, and uh, meet to what, a, what a customer would need. It's possible, it's got, we got it first time silicon success. Uh, it was no, no problems with it. And then most importantly, we had it that, that built with a collaborative effort across the, uh, the globe. So that's it, thank you. Thank you. Okay.